I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And welcome to the eighth episode of Behind the Fleet podcast. And tonight I've got DJ Chaos with us. Tell us just a little bit about who you are, DJ Chaos. All right. How you doing? What's going on, people? Behind the Fleet. DJ Chaos, Mass Fleet representative, uh, Springfield Mass native. Um, behind Chaos, uh, father, husband, brother, uncle, and newly grandfather. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you, my daughter. But, you know, new, newly grandfather. Um, but just Chaos is just a, a all-around all around guy. I, I grew up in the music area, uh, in this music business with, with my father, watching my father um, from times from him as as a band member to music producer so um i just i i have my behind the scenes staple of seeing certain things and being around a lot of people as a kid um but at the same time living a regular normal life and not really knowing the difference but beyond that uh that's just a little little snippet of dj chaos okay and how can these people find you on social media i always like to tell them at the very top of our episode all right so the best way to find me on social media is dj chaos so dj chaos c-h-a-o-z 413 on all platforms um facebook will actually be brandon dj chaos 413 um but every other platform you give me dj chaos 413 um i'm trying to think TikTok, instagram uh, what's the new one? X was well, not new, but Twitter. Uh, <laughs> uh, you name it. Just look up DJ Cash four one three, and you'll see me in Google. Google me. I I'll there pop up. Go. Not a problem. All right. So I can't wait to hop into this conversation because even in your intro, you already gave me some snippets of things that I kind of want to dive a little bit deeper into. Mm -hmm. But let's start with. Um, the musical career of your father since he was such a heavy influence on how you got into this industry yourself? Yeah, so uh, typically growing up as, as a little kid, my father was he was, at that time he was uh, not a band member. He grew up as a band member so he used to be a drummer um, okay. dealing in bands and when I decided to come along in his life uh, that's when he actually spurred out into being a manager. He was a manager of two groups locally in this area, um, a female group and a male group, you know, back in the day when they had groups, you know, R&B mm -hmm. groups. We need to bring that back. Anybody watching, bring it back. But um, he was a manager of two groups and some things actually happened uh, and during that time where uh, he basically found out, you know, the, the real end of the business. Um, for him, the groups kind of separated on him and he decided to take a different path, but he stayed in that pathway and started as managing to producing music. And he kept that that focus going. So as he kept that focus going as me as a kid, I just sat there and just soaked everything in. Um, being in different radio stations, being in different recording studios throughout the New York area, throughout the Massachusetts area, and, and even in the California area. Um, at times, just meeting different people, different a &Rs, different producers, uh, meeting different acts growing up as a kid. Um, you know, these people held me as a baby, which I didn't know who they were until I started seeing pictures. Um, so just watching my father, like I said, is just him being that producer and just an entrepreneur all my life. That's all I seen was just him working and doing that grind, wake up, sleep. You know, he always told me early bird gets the worm. You know, if you wake up later, somebody's going to beat you, beat you to it. So if you want to get to that bag, you got to get to it first. So um, I always took that with him, no matter, I always took that with me, no matter what he told me. I mean, like, oh, you know, I got to go get a car wash. Let me get up early in the morning, get it done. Because you know, if I don't, somebody else is going to be there. It's going to be multiple people. So I took that and strove with it through everything. Okay. So when you got into the industry, like, did you play any type of instruments in school or did you go from being with your father and then getting behind the turntable? All right, so everybody don't laugh. Uh, <laughs> I came up in, I, I, I came up in, Miss Wells won't laugh first, see y'all, see. But no, um, I, I came up in the, in the D.A.R.E. program type of era. You know, so um, at that time I was actually in the choir. Um, 
Okay. That's when I was able to I was able to sing a little bit. I, I can't I I can't sing no more. Uh don't smoke cigarettes. Um, <laughs> six years clean. But um no, um I grew up in a choir. So doing doing choir, from choiring to getting older to dibble dabbling into the rapping scene, I was a majority of an artist slash mini graphic artist as well for him. So my father had a company called Mass Line Entertainment. Um, and then also 413 Productions. So he did video and he also do music. And at that time, I was just dibble dabbing and doing certain little graphics for him. Okay. Also, I was trying to be an artist for him. And for local artists that we have out here that are legends in, in the Springfield area that you know hit certain plateaus, um, my father was able to work with. So I learned from them and then getting into it. So I started actually off as a regular artist before I became a DJ. DJ uh came a suit actually during my college time mm, okay yeah um i look at by the time i ended deciding i went to college late so uh i was a knucklehead in, in my time but when i got my things together i decided to go to school because that was the best way to try to be better for my kids was to you know make sure i had a strong uh, strong head on my shoulders as much as possible so uh it just actually plateaued was I always had love for music. I just didn't know where I wanted to be in music. Um, mm -hmm. Just watching him as a producer, that was like the biggest thing. It's like, okay, that's what he does. So from changing to the producer side, it was more of just like I said, going to school and talking to a counselor of mine who asked me if I ever did radio. And I told him, no, I never did it before. From there, he actually gave me my radio spot where he said, all right, I'm gonna have you do radio. So I took off and I created, um, I called it lockdown. Every Thursday is a lockdown. It was basically out here in my area. Thursday nights was a college night. Okay. And so I had a lockdown where I, I got everybody. I tried to get all everybody on campus hype and ready to go out for college night you know, at every club, get them right. And um, I did that for about two years. And that just by myself walking around and connecting with certain people, I end up bumping into a few people that own little bars here and there and end up doing little debuts there. Okay. So when did you meet Fleet? Like when did Fleet come into your journey? Um, I'm new to Fleet. So I met Fleet last year in March. So I'm actually going on my one year. And okay. um, in all honesty, I really don't know how I actually came across Fleet. It was like one of those like bump in things. And I think I was just seeing one thing and i started reading up on them a little bit i, I liked the direction that they was going i like what i was reading and i just reached out you know i'm one of them people is if, if you don't reach out to something then you won't get it you know closed mouth don't get fed so i just reached out to get some information um i talked to a few people in in, in the area at the time it was a uh, dj iron chef dj Bershe, and um dj p money and I talked to the gentleman in the conversation that we had, I was like in the conversation. I, I liked the that the the steadiness and the and the focus of focus point that they had in it. And therefore from there, it just connected for both sides where I I ended up becoming a member. And I've been a member ever since. And uh, I'm gonna be a member for a while. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So welcome to the family. You are one of the newbies for sure. Yes, yes. <laughs> So how has the experience been thus far? Like, talk just a little bit about some of the things that you've been able to do within a year of being a part of the organization. Oh, just uh, being in an organization itself, for one is you, you look at, you know, we all do everything on our own. So we all have our own side, side hustles as one. Uh, DJ Chaos Entertainment is, is mine. So, you know, we have our own baby that we're actually nurturing and, and raising and, and doing what we gotta do. But as a brotherhood and a sisterhood and a, and a big family, um, it just helped me out. So for the year of time of being together, I, for one, brought in, I brought in my family of more people to talk to, more people to lean on. If I have questions on things, besides the people I have locally, I get to reach out more ideas, more perspectives, um, more opportunities to uh, learn things. Um, being a, a PD, uh, you know, a program director for Turn It Up Radio is is one of the things that I was able to get out of out of Fleet. On top of being a PD, is uh, as well as just 
more networking with with more people of indie from all over the world and just connecting and at the same time with that connection i end up finding out through this short time certain people hearing my name in areas that i didn't even know it and it wasn't for fleet it was just you know hey this person comes on doing a call and you know say my name and they got you know, i heard you before and I, you know it's just say all right great you know whatever i'm doing i'm doing good so you mentioned something that a lot of people don't know, and that's just how many con like conference calls, networking opportunities, and ways mm -hmm. that you can really get out here and be a part of fleet, but really expand your own personal business and brand. Like, yeah. can you talk just a little bit about the people that you've been able to connect with, whether it's in a different organization? somebody that's another producer in another state like talk a little bit about okay. how that's business. you know um just with inside fleet itself you know i was able to end up connecting more with more industry-minded people more people that's connected more managers that are connected with uh celebrity artists also along with other celebrity artists is able to actually conversate with other celebrity artists is able to put me in that bracket um, not a not an assist of you know we're using the name. It's just for the work it's, that we stand on, and at the same time, you know my work showing it for itself as well. So it goes hand in hand, and they know that we're not you know they know fleet when we don't play games, you know about <laughs> business here. We don't do that nothing like that, and um, we're serious about when we say we're gonna get behind you. So um, I was able to connect with a few people, um, Trap Beckham, Soul Candy. Uh, TJ the DJ, just to name a few people, um, G Mims, just certain people that I'm able to actually speak to. I can reach out. Um, they actually contact back, and it's not just like some random or through a call. Um, no, we actually build a connection. And then at the same time, you build more connection with other people in other areas where you know you can progress your business. Absolutely. Like I think that's been the most the most critical thing that I've taken from Fleet as long as I've been a member here is mm -hmm. how it's truly worldwide and almost anywhere you go, you're gonna be able to find somebody that's a part of this organization. And if they're not there yet, you will probably be the person that is able to bring someone in in one of these new locations Correct. to expand the business and brand. Um, I, I think it's a, I think the other important piece that you mentioned is what you do independently on your own outside of fleet. So can you talk just a little bit about your business itself um, when you separate DJ Chaos from Fleet DJ? Yeah, so you know, we're, regardless of the fact, DJ Chaos is DJ Chaos, Fleet is Fleet, but at the same time, we're a unit. We're we're still together as one. But uh, creating my, my business and, and an organization with throughout itself is just creating a name for itself and doing everything we do. Um, Fleet is a platform that helps out as it's a connection. Um, Fleet is a platform that has multiple resources to help you out. Fleet is an organization that can steer you in the right direction if you feel like you're going in the wrong direction or if you've never been in that particular, you have somebody to talk to. So. Um, building on your own is the one thing is, is you can't have somebody else do something for you. You got to actually do the work mm -hmm. to make sure that work comes in for yourself. So that, that's the biggest thing. So the, the grind of me and DJ Chaos Entertainment is, is the network in itself outside of it. Um, reaching out to people, trying to grab more business, you know, people don't understand how hard it is to, to make sure, especially when you have multiple people in that same type of field that, you know, people can hit like a Rolodex and, oh, I can go to this person. <laughs> or, you know, I don't want to deal with this, let's deal with that. Um, but it, it becomes the area where, you know, Fleet helps out also on how to structure your business. We have certain people that's within the family that can help out to get you in a better structure. Your structure might be at one point where you feel comfortable, but they can help you on a better place where it looks better. You know, a better present it is presented better. Um, all honesty, I never had an EP, uh, uh, EPK before okay. until I came into Fleet. Like, oh, I need one of those. <laughs> and um, that's just the connections I made with uh, with the guys from DigiWax, um, which is, yeah. you know, how we end up making connections through Fleet itself. 
And just talking with some of them guys out there that's been in the, in the industry for a long period of time of things that we do need. So, you know, you end up finding out certain things. You can do things on your own, but certain things that you don't know. Um, and if nobody's there to actually tell you or you end up finding out a little bit too late, you know, it kind of gives you a head start and helps you out a little bit better, especially yeah. with these guys. But do you just do DJing or are you similar to your father where you do production and videography or is it just like in that entertainment piece? At the moment, it's majority DJing uh, production. I'm, I'm working my way into that slowly. Um, also, I, I, I'm actually the manager of, I'm one of the managers of math, of, of mass fleet division of graphic design. So I, I do a lot of graphics as this is one of them as well. So it's, uh, I, I do a lot of flyers uh, for the Twitch people. I do emotes. Um, so we, I do a lot of different type of things and still progressing and learning in that field as well. You know, self-taught. Um, uh, well, let me let me change that. YouTube taught. Um, <laughs> but in, in all reality, it, it's just teaching uh, other aspects and other ways to actually make revenue when one is not making it at that time. Man, that's a whole, excuse me, that's a whole conversation that we can go into in itself where mm -hmm. there's so many different revenues that you start to realize are available for you to maximize on. Because a lot mm -hmm. of the times people think like DJ is just getting up and breaking a track, but you can do so, so, so much more for an artist, a producer, a manager versus just getting that track and breaking it. Oh, yeah, most definitely. So talk a little bit about what Massachusetts has going on right now. Like, what is the Mass Fleet DJs up to? What do they have going on in the works? Uh, you know, we 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 getting ready for we, you know we getting ready for July. Um, <laughs> Tell that, these people what's what, coming up in July, just in case you know, they don't. The thirteenth annual Fleet DJ Conference. If you don't know, you better know. If you don't got your tickets, you better get your tickets now. Um, unfortunately, I won't be able to make it because I actually have to have an engagement, um, okay. engagement gig I have to actually do around that same time. But beyond that, it, it's a, it's a, a basically our, one of our biggest networks of, uh, networking with industry like minded people for models, photographers, producers, DJs, artists, you name it, it's going to be there. If, you, if you're looking for the guy with the bean pie, he on the corner. <laughs> um, but we're going to be there and we're going to do what we got to do. But uh, for Mass Fleet, it's just at the same time, we're, we're just getting things together. Um, we're, we're making sure the family's good. We're, we're doing organizations and, and we're just trying to make sure that we represent Mass, Massachusetts the way we can. You know, we got different people from all over, from Springfield, Worcester. Uh, we got Rhode Island, a part of it. And we still hang with our people from the Connecticut sector and New York sector. But, you know, for the mass side, it's just, we're just trying to make sure that we're, we're doing good. We're kind of new to the family as well. So, you know, we're just, we're building. So if, if there's people out there that are in the area or they're just like, man, I need to get some stuff going up in mass. Like how do they get in contact with you all to be able to do an artist spotlight or even oh, get their tracks to you? You can definitely hit us on uh, Instagram at Mass Fleet DJs. Um, you can hit me on Instagram and I'll make sure that we connect through. Um, I'm actually one of the hosts for Artist Spotlights as well. So um, you can really get in contact with me, DJ Chaos 413 uh, with a Z, not an S. Um, and the things is for the for the Massachusetts area, it, you definitely want to come to Massachusetts area. You know, Massachusetts area is is a big thing from the Boston sector to even the small towns. Small towns, you know, you you want to hit the small towns because small towns are going to show you a lot of love. Um, you, you know, hit the Springfield area if you're down. If you've never been, you need to get out here. Hit me up before you come and uh, let's make some work. You know, that's the biggest thing. My slogan is less work. Ooh, that's a good one. DJ Chaos, hashtag less work. Less work. <laughs> that's powerful. So DJ Chaos, like I know that we went a couple of different ways in this conversation, but I always like to make sure that we also leave the viewers with like some nuggets of information on how they can be either a better artist, producer, DJ, if that's something that they're interested in getting involved in. 
like what is a gem or a really good piece of advice that you've heard along your career that you've kept with you throughout this whole throughout this whole journey? Consistency. Ooh, that's a good one. Be comfortable on being uncomfortable. Those are the two that I always take with me because consistency is always the key. As long as you're consistent with something, eventually it'll work out for you. You just got to have a love for it. No one can push you harder than yourself than yourself. You can have people that can be behind you, but if you're not pushing and they don't see the drive in you, then they won't push as hard as you. So, you know, and the other thing is, is make sure that you're not putting yourself in a comfort zone because in a comfort zone, it's, it's self-explanatory. You're comfortable now. When you're uncomfortable yeah. is when you want to go to a higher perspective. You know, I'm comfortable if I make it to one level. That's cool. But once I get there now, I'm uncomfortable because I'm trying to make it to the next one. You know, things are things are not easy. They get harder. Oh, I'll spot on. Like, I could keep going. And I know we still got a couple more minutes, but I do have a couple more questions that I want to make sure that we get out so these sure. viewers have the opportunity to just really know a little bit more about you. Like, in this business, a lot of the times people only talk about the wins or the successes. But I think it's also important for us to talk just a little bit about some of the obstacles and hurdles that you've had to overcome in the journey to get to where you are right now. Like, has there ever been a moment where you're like, I mean, I'm I'm not DJing no more. I'm done with it. I, I'm moving on to something different. Or have you always had this passion and, and continue to drive forward through it? Always had the love for it. Um but there's always a time where you sit there and say, is it worth it? Um, actually, one of my brothers said, is, is it worth the squeeze? Um, so they say. And, and in that aspect, it's, it's really true because you, you look at the biggest thing is the same thing as, about, as I was saying before, is being comfortable or being uncomfortable. The uncomfortable spot is knowing that you might have a bad night as a singer as a rapper you might go on stage and you might kill the last five shows but this show you, you didn't you know they booed you okay take it and run with it you know if you if you got a video of it nowadays everybody records everything watch that video see what you did wrong if you remember what you did wrong fix that same thing when it goes for djs um, DJs go in, you might have a, a phenomenal whole month, and then that next next month you have a crappy month, or you know, you messed up on a set. You know, you go then don't give up. Just fix what you did before. You know, that's the, the, the biggest thing ever. So I done had my my ups and downs. Um, you, you look at, you know, you might not have the for certain certain clients, you might not have what they're looking for. So, you know, you, you missed out on that because, you know, now since you don't have it, they, they want to look for somebody else. So you, you missed out on that money, which will go from, you know, if there's wins and then there's losses. You know, sometimes you might be making, you know, X amount of dollars these times and then all of a sudden you're not making those those dollars. You know, the thing is, is when you're not making those dollars, are you going to sit there and say, all right, I'm done with it or I need to figure out how to make the dollars keep coming in? And, and that's the biggest thing is I, as I, you know, we spend a block and go right back to knowing how to find out, find other ways of making revenue when the other revenue is not helping. Ooh. Try to find a balance. Like you gave so many gems and if don't nobody take nothing from this conversation, I know what I have personally taken is the fact like you just got to make it make sense. You keep mm -hmm. trying things, keep putting this together with that, keep networking. And like you said, eventually it'll start coming together and you'll see the traction that you want, especially when you join organizations like Sweet DJs that give you all these other people that can help you along that journey. That, that's true. Um, they, they give a lot. They, you know, they'll put it out there. They, it's at the end of the day, we go back to that old saying, you can lead a horse to the water, but you can't make them drink. So, you know, in all reality, especially inside this family of fleet, it's it's basically the, that same aspect. 
I can give you this. I can put this in front of you. You can ask the question, and then I give you the guidance of where you can find it. The thing is, it's up to you after that. And I always say it every day. I say it in um, every, every chat room that we're in. And one of my messages is always, whatever you didn't do yesterday, make sure you continue it today. Um, at the same time, whatever you look at where, you know, you didn't have the answer for that, reach out. You know, everybody, some people like to play gatekeeper, but you can't find another person. Just keep trying hard. That's the biggest thing. My, my goal is everything is to make sure I do whatever I can for my family. Um, that that's the, that's the real drive for what I do is trying to give them a better life than where I had. Lord, I if I you. can. So what's next? Like, what do you, what is your plans with fleet and what is your plans for yourself for 2024 and beyond? Uh, next, uh, outside, um, 2023, I wasn't, I really wasn't outside that much. So 2024, my plans is to be outside more. Um, 2024 also is to have turn it up radio, um, start getting some nominations, uh, try to make it better than what it is. So, you know, we, we take all, put some more DJs on it, program more, learn more. Um, the brain is the biggest muscle ever. So the, the biggest thing is learn more with whatever you can learn and, and keep moving from there. Um, the other thing is, too, is capitalize on, on revenue and, and not say no this year. I, I said no a lot last year, so it's, it's time to say yes. Love it, love it, love it. Well, DJ Chaos, again, I appreciate you coming on this evening and giving Thanks us for having me on who you are. But please make sure you remind these people again how they can get in contact with you and how they can also connect with the Mass Fleet DJs if they are wanting to get their records broken or find some collaboration opportunities with you all. So definitely Instagram, DJ Chaos, what is Z413. Uh, you can get Mass Fleet DJs also on Instagram, Mass Fleet DJs. Um, if you can't, you can reach me my email, uh, Fleet DJs at chaos, uh, Fleet DJs chaos at gmail.com, or catch me on my uh, website, www.djchaos413entertainment.com. Well, you all know how we always wrap these episodes up. Until next time, when we kick off episode nine of the Behind the Fleet podcast, follow me on Instagram at It's Just Miss Wells. Tap in with DJ Chaos at DJ Chaos413. And make sure that you also go in and connect with the Mass Fleet DJs because there's a lot of opportunities there. But until you know what next we say, let's work. And let's work. <laughs> but until next episode, you all, we are out of here. Appreciate you. <laughs>